Let your awareness rest with the breath. You don't have to go jumping out to other things outside. Just be right here. Get a sense of settling in. And as for any thoughts that come into the mind, you just let them go. You don't have any responsibility toward them right now. The only things you want to think about are the breath, the body, your mind. And feelings of ease. Ask yourself what kind of breathing would give rise to feelings of ease. Any tension or tightness in the body, think of it melting away. The mind needs times like this for, for it to put down its burdens, and so it can heal itself. The Buddha is like a doctor. His teachings are like medicine. They're not just meant to be put there on the shelf and looked at. They're meant to be taken to solve the illnesses of the mind, cure the illnesses of the mind. We all have three major illnesses, greed, aversion, delusion. And then they branch out into little tiny illnesses, but all of which can cause a lot of harm if we don't take care of the mind. If we do take care of the mind, then we can, at the very least, make the symptoms less. And as the Buddha said, you can ultimately get it so the mind doesn't have any diseases at all. So take the Buddha's medicine. His virtue, concentration, discernment all based on generosity. These are all medicine for the mind. Generosity helps to overcome greed. Virtue helps to overcome the tendency to want to cause harm or not to care about causing harm. It comes from appreciation of heedfulness, that there are dangers in the mind, dangers in the world outside. And you put the two of them together and you can create a lot of danger. But if you can overcome the dangers in the mind, then the dangers outside can't reach in. So we make up our minds that we'll hold by the precepts, no killing, no stealing, no illicit sex, no lying, no taking alcohol or other intoxicants, because we know that these things cause harm. Not only do we harm others, but more importantly, we harm ourselves when we engage in them. So we develop hatefulness to overcome our laziness and carelessness. And then there's meditation, which overcomes our delusion. Because sometimes we think a good idea is a bad idea, a bad idea is a good idea. When we get things all confused like this, it's really hard to know what to do. Or we may think we know what to do, but we end up causing harm anyhow. So you want to be able to look carefully at your mind, not go running with everything that comes in. The way to get beyond delusion is to step back and look at your thoughts and see how they form. So you can step outside them, understand where they're coming from, where they're going. And when you see that a thought's going to lead you to do something unskillful, you just don't engage in it. That's where you can overcome the diseases that create so much suffering here in the mind and around you. You take the Buddha's medicine and you really get a greater and greater appreciation for how good it is, if you just look at it in the bottle or look at it in the tube. It doesn't seem to be like much. But when you actually take the medicine in the bottle, take the medicine in the tube, you find that it really does cure disease. And the mind gets a greater, greater sense of well-being and health. So take the Buddha's medicine. He's offering it freely. And he's one doctor you can really trust.